You're in class, learning a new topic. You turn your head and my man Derek over there and everyone else seem to be understanding everything. But it's the fact that Derek is understanding that's just really grinding on you. Forget about Derek. It's the fact that it isn't clicking for you. Everybody's raising their hand, calling out, smashing their homeworks and tests. But there's you. Sorry, it sounds like I'm just sending for you. Anyway, what's up guys? My name's Neil, a fully qualified teacher and examiner who has taught thousands of children across the UK. I'm the head of maths at my Edspace. He's not like watching me, bro. <laughs> Stop and stay. Where I create and deliver all the maths lessons for Key Stage 3, GCSE, and A level, making the homeworks full of exam style questions, and I manage the mentors who provide unlimited support for my students. Now, let's get on to the video. First thing is this you're not actually bad at math. It's time to drop these negative thought processes. This kind of mindset has been taught to you over time, and it's not the right attitude to have about your studies. Us humans, we are problem solvers. It's innate within us. This is not to say some are better than others. That's absolutely the case. Imagine thinking that if you run enough, one day you'll beat Usain Bolt's world record. Or, I don't know, something more relatable. If you practice your vocals long enough, you'll be as good as the legend, you know Miles. I get money every day of the week. Don't forget my calamari. What a tune. Not to quote Gordon Ramsay or anything, I'm not here to gash you up and give you false expectations. But a large proportion of students who come to me have this attitude towards maths, which is not helpful. But with the right preparation, motivation, and encouragement, all of my students have worked towards their maximum potential to succeed in their math studies. It might take a bit longer to click, and that's okay, because let me tell you something. Once you reach that aha moment, Moment. You have literally rewired your brain in a way that's very difficult to reverse. Let me remind you again, it is not your natural ability holding you back. It is your mindset. I'll give you an example of how this mindset works in the real world. At my ed space, we love to employ university students. Do you really think they know how to do much other than study for exams? Probably not, but they are open to trying new things and learning. They accept that it will be challenging at first, but they also know that over time it will get easier. It's always hardest the first time. In my Key Stage 3 streams where my kids are more open to expressing their feelings, they always scream about how they have no idea what's going on. Guys, I haven't even moved on from the first slide. Chill out, but I guide them. Let me do a few examples and see how you feel. And what do you think happens? Once they've had a go, they realize that it does get easier. First off, it's brilliant that you are watching this video right now. You're actively taking steps towards fixing a problem you've identified in your maths. And to be honest, any subject for that matter. Let me guess, you look at a question and absolutely nothing comes to mind. You hit a brick in the wall immediately. Oh, a brick in the wall. <laughs> Let me guess, you look at a question and absolutely nothing comes to mind. You hit a brick wall immediately. You what, mate? <laughs> <laughs> or do you spend ages trying to understand a topic, but then you look at another question where the context is just slightly different, you freak out. <laughs> or even worse, you feel like you're always one step behind your peers in class who seem to be excelling. As I said before, it may take you longer. And I mean that literally. If maths does not come to you easily, that's just how it works. Trust me, you will speed up. Allow it some time, intention, and effort. And trust me, all those maths nerds like me, when I was young, doing English reading, we did something called Of Mice and Men. I was always wondering, where are the mice in this story? Don't get me started on my man Shakespeare. <laughs> Hey, I'm a magician with these words. Don't get me started on my man Shakespeare, Montagues and uh, Capricorns and all that. Or trying to conjugate some French verbs. The only conjugation I understand with complex numbers. Shout out to my further mathematicians. Let me tell you a little secret. I spent some time revising, I don't know, let's say economics. But I spent even longer drilling maths because I loved it so much. Which is how I got my first class at UCL. Wait, what? My first class? Which is how I got my first class at UCL. And uh, getting 87% in my final year. And I did my A-levels at 16. Is my hair still fine? <laughs> now, I wasn't even ever bad at maths, but I still put in that work and you can too. Obviously, I did it because I wanted to be the best. You can do it too to become amazing. What? Why are you laughing? And maths is easy to get into that flow state, flow state, if you allow yourself to. That sounded, why was my voice cracking? Find out that. Get into that flow state if you allow yourself to. I don't want to hear you lot whining that you're not good at maths if you haven't practiced enough. Let me tell you something. Nothing 
worthwhile in life comes easy. Encounter your difficulties and work through them. Next, a lot of you aren't gonna like this one, but I have a suspicion some of you use I can't do maths as a bit of an excuse. If you don't like maths, it's easy to say I can't do maths. For example, whenever I don't wanna clean Chi Chi's litter tray, I say, I can't clean Chi Chi's litter tray today because I'm too busy or because she's a big girl now, she can do it herself. Never say I can't, you can. Let me tell you about my ex-student. We're gonna call him Eric. Eric actually couldn't do maths. He thought 51 was a prime number. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But Eric started revising at a grade, if I remember correctly, it was something like minus five. This kid, who had never put up his hand in class, never turned in any homework, looked at the whiteboard with a completely blank look in his face. Five weeks before this exam, he was scared he was gonna fail. He came to me very late in the year for help and told me he just couldn't do maths. He was gonna disappoint his parents and there was nothing he could do. What did I do? I sat him down, gave him a speech that I'm giving to you now, and guess what he did? This kid went pure, super saying God mode, and used the revision plan I made with my mentors, and used to ask me the most insanely basic questions for four weeks, and I respect that he put his ego aside and would not give up. By the fifth week, I didn't want to jinx anything, but Eric was in pretty good shape. He was doing a paper per day for his final bits of revision, and he ended up securing a seven from a three. The kid who thought he couldn't do any maths smashed it out of the park. I want you all to think about our man Super Saiyan Eric when you're preparing for your exams. If he can do it, so can you. This brings me to my very last point. You need to ask the questions you may think are silly to start progressing. Think of it this way. If you aren't understanding easy concepts, how will you ever get them without asking silly questions? Forget about people judging you. I encourage you to approach maths with an open mind and a willingness. A what? <laughs> and a willingness to learn. From my experience, these silly questions you're afraid to ask are the same questions probably 30% of other students might be wondering too. So you're doing them a favor. Maths is not just about getting the right answers, but also about thinking creatively and critically. And these questions you might have are a form of creativity. With practice, perseverance, and procedure, anyone can improve their math skills and confidence. Ultimately, I believe that you can learn and master math, regardless of your current level of confidence or experience. With exams right around the corner, this advice is going to help you with all of your subjects for the rest of your life. I'm gonna leave you with this last thought. Success is not a destination, it's a journey. It's not about being perfect or never making mistakes, but about continuously striving to be better than you were yesterday. It won't be easy, but I promise you that the effort you put in will be worth it in the end. So take ownership of your situation, adopt a growth mindset, and commit to putting in the work to improve your math skills. I believe in you and I know you have the potential to achieve great things. I know I've given you a lot of critical advice today, but nothing more critical than you liking, commenting and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And make sure you check out part one and part two of the exam series. Grade nine, Aquaman out. Peace.